Lecter. Oh, Lecter. I really want to make another cooking video, but I want to do another cooking video based on another type of medium. I did one on a video game. I did one in an adult cartoon series. I did one on a kids TV series that adults love. And I might do more on that on that show, but I, I need one from a movie franchise. I need some recipes from a movie franchise. It doesn't even have to be a franchise. It has to be like from a company that just loves putting food into their movies. That'll make anyone hungry. Make people's mouths water. Like fr from a different country too. Because all oh, like Mexican food, Chinese food, Italian food, any type of food. I just I just need an idea. Mm. That's it. I can ask you guys for help. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what should I make? Uh, Totoro, what do you think? Uh, no face. Uh, what do you think? Ponyo, Ponyo, my little, little mermaid anime style fish thing girl who turns to a human. Well, well you, you were supposed to stay human permanently, but, but, but that's besides the point. You got an idea? Huh. Well, okay then. I, I, I guess I just need to watch a movie to think about it. Ooh, I, I think, I think I'll watch Princess Mononoke while I think about it. Oh, and, uh, maybe, maybe Howl's Moving Castle, maybe, maybe, maybe that could help. Uh, oh, and just a little bonus, uh, maybe The Wind Rises. Oh, oh, and, uh, Whisper of the Heart. And, uh, yeah, God, I'm not sure these are going to help me with any ideas because I just, mm, I need an idea. I'm just being silly. You already know what I'm going to be making. I'm obviously going to be making for freaking Studio Ghibli. Hey guys, what is up? This is Matthew Davis Me once again, and welcome back to some more cooking. And uh, like I mentioned before in my last video, I wanted to do more videos for this channel rather than just movie reviews, but of course, I'm always going to do movie reviews because that's pretty much my thing. But I also wanted to do more videos that um, don't involve, well, okay, technically this involves movies because I'm making recipes that are from or inspired by movies. I wanted to make more cooking videos, but I wanted to get more recipe books, so I went to Barnes & Noble and tried to look for the best recipe book that uh, I could find, but not just any recipe book, a recipe book that involves recipes from popular TV shows or movies or even video games. And I've done that before in the past, and I want to continue doing more. And I found the perfect one. What's an animated movie company that uh, guarantees uh, to make you hungry with each of their movies. Well, that is none other than the masters of Japanese animation themselves, Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli is pretty much the first thing you think of when you think of feature-length Japanese animated films. I am a massive Studio Ghibli fan. I have seen all their movies. I even did a ranking of all their movies except for Boy and the Heron because that wasn't out until a year after. So now I am going to be making recipes from this book right here. Now technically this is unofficial. Like uh, some of these recipes aren't actually in some of the movies, but uh, um, they do have heavenly inspired recipes that would be from the movies. Basically all these movies that are presently seen right in here. So yeah, I'm going to be making not one, but three recipes. Now, I'm not going to be doing all this at once, and as you may notice, I'm not wearing a Studio Ghibli shirt. I'm wearing a Xbox shirt that I've worn for a couple days. I know what you're thinking, why am I not wearing a Studio Ghibli shirt? When you have seen me wear Studio Ghibli shirts before, one, because of the amount of weight I lost, they don't really fit me anymore. I mean, I could have them on, but they just look way too big. Also, they're at my mom's place. But you know what? I'm not going to be making all these recipes in one day, so you will see me wear one. I could just buy one from like Box Lunch or Hot Topic, but they're kind of expensive and I needed to save money so I could get the ingredients so I can make this video. So yeah, but either way, um, yeah. Um, for now, you're just going to have to see me wear this, but I'm going to be making a breakfast recipe, a dinner recipe, and a dessert. 
And with the boy and the heron coming out on 4K in July, I feel like this would be a good time to celebrate that, knowing the fact that they're releasing a Studio Ghibli movie on 4K. So maybe there's a possibility we could have more of those movies on 4K? Maybe? Please? Seriously, I, I would much rather spend more money on physical release than have to pay for them in streaming. Yeah, I'm always going to support it, so don't judge me. Now, of course, because uh, there is a breakfast recipe, if you were to watch the perfect Studio Ghibli film while having breakfast, that would be none other than Howl's Moving Castle. It has easily one of the most beautiful breakfast scenes I have ever seen in film, and it just has me thinking, why can't we have breakfast like that? It just looks way too good. So, of course, we're going to be making bacon and eggs, but this isn't just any ordinary bacon and eggs. In fact, this isn't even the exact same type of bacon and eggs that you see in the movie, because that is just way too basic. No, this one is in a much more different form. We're going to be making this into like a bacon-like sandwich, which, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, I'm actually curious in trying it. So yeah, they're inspired by Studio Ghibli, but this isn't official, so yeah. And it's pretty easy to make, so... Yeah. So without any more delays, let's get cooking. Except here's the thing, I'm not making it today. No, because it's actually 7 o'clock in the evening, and uh, I just wanted to get this part of the video up before the next day because I'm going to be very busy because uh, as I'm filming this video, Furiosa will be coming out the next day. So, and I'm, I'm probably not going to make the next recipe until a few days after, but it doesn't matter. If you're watching this video, I've been talking way too much. You just want to see me cook. So, yeah, uh, I'll just have to wait till the next day and we'll finally start cooking. Alright, it's a little past five in the morning. I know that's pretty early, but... Uh, yeah, since I'm up, I might as well just do this, so... Anyways, uh, here's what you're going to need. Of course, you are going to need eggs, uh, you're going to need bread, uh, cooking spray, salt and pepper, uh, garlic powder, and bacon. Um, this is a specific type of bacon, this is like, uh, round, and it's actually called pork roll, so... Yeah, I assume you can use it as bacon, you know, kind of like Canadian bacon. I found it in the bacon aisle, because that's actually what you need. You need, like, a round, uh... I mean, you can use, uh, like a regular bacon, but, uh, I don't know, I just, I wanted to use, like, the round kind, because, well, you can use it for, like, sandwiches and whatnot, but, yeah, anyways, let's get started. Alright, so first thing you want to do is you want to oil your pan up with the cooking spray, then you want to add two slices of, uh, bacon, so, one, and two. And then you want to fry them up. I'm gonna put it on, uh, yeah, right there. So, yeah, let's wait till these get nice and crispy. Of course, you want to add in uh, the eggs. Then add half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And you simply want to beat them in. Uh, stir it up and add a quick dash of salt and pepper oh, things not to do. Yeah. there we go yeah then you want to get a piece of bread and uh, just Cut it in half. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Then you want to spray a smaller pan. Then uh, add the mixture of eggs in. And then the two pieces of bread, which you want to flip on both sides. Yeah, kind of like if you were making French toast. Yeah. Okay. That should be good. And uh, set the stove to like uh, a little under medium. So, yeah. 
uh, the bacon should be almost done, so, yeah. I recommend covering it up with, like, a top, so, um, it'll solidify better. So, yeah, just wait till it solidifies, and, uh, yeah, then, then you wanna, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Alright, I think we can take the bacon out now. Alright, once it's solidified well enough, you wanna flip, uh, both, uh, sides, like, uh, oops. Sure, that's, that's all right. Okay, now flip it over. Uh, there we go. Then you add in the bacon, so you want to arrange them. Uh, let's uh, see if we can get this. Okay, just put that in, then flip it over. You go. So uh, yeah, it looks a lot better in the book, but yeah, you're supposed to flip like one edge over. But I think it's because the pan I used is pretty small, so yeah, I could have used the big one that I was using for the bacon. I could have actually used the bacon for the small one, but yeah, I'm sure it'll taste good anyway. All right, so here's the omelet. Yeah, I got a muffin to go with it, just so I have more to eat. So, anyways, uh, yeah, let's try this. Yeah, that's good. That was really good. The garlic powder definitely adds a little bit more texture to it. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely recommend it. Angles a little slant, okay. Um, but yeah, give me like uh, a few more days because um, yeah, I still don't have all the ingredients for the other stuff I'm gonna make. But you know, I just wanted to get this out of the way so I wouldn't have to do it later. So. Yeah, just give me some time and I'll have the ingredients for the next recipe I'm going to make. Alright, so it's been three days since I made that breakfast. So yeah, I know, it took me a while to get more of the ingredients. But uh, yeah, also I couldn't find any of my Studio Ghibli shirts. And that's okay because both of them were XL and I'm not an XL anymore. And I'm not even a large anymore. I'm a medium now. This shirt I'm wearing right now is a medium, and yes, I literally just got this today for this video. I almost just thought about just wearing one of my anime shirts since that's the closest thing I have to a Studio Ghibli shirt that I have in this house. But yeah, I got the Totoro one. Looks pretty cool, if I do say so myself. But now enough of the chit chat, let's continue on. Uh, we're gonna be making two recipes. We're gonna be making a dinner and a dessert. We're gonna start off the dessert first because I think it's gonna take longer as according to the book. And this recipe is inspired by the underrated little gem, The Cat Returns. This is gonna be on the vanilla sponge cake. Uh, for this, the ingredients we'll need are three ounces of cream cheese, two tablespoons of salted butter, uh, one fourth cup of milk, three eggs, one fourth cup of flour, four teaspoons of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one fourth cup of sugar. And according to this, it takes an hour and 35 minutes to make. Though it's not too difficult, it's only by two of those ball things from Spirited Away. So yeah, let's make it. All right, so first thing you wanna do, you wanna melt uh, the cream cheese, the butter, and the milk um, in a saucepan. So yeah, that's uh, three ounces of cream cheese, two tablespoons of salted butter, yeah, and then one fourth cup of milk, yeah. And you want to put this on low heat, so and then let it form a soft, like liquid uh, texture. Okay, so with the eggs, you want to separate the egg yolks and the egg whites. Um, you want to beat the egg uh, yolks. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully I'm not putting this uh, on too high. No, I think it's good. Yeah, makes me feel like I'm making pavlova all over again with the egg whites. Though I actually was able to make it last night and not screw it up. If you saw my uh, newest short, so yeah, those look 
uh, well beaten enough. Okay, uh, once the, the cream cheese texture or uh, the cream cheese uh, mixture um, is like uh, thick enough, um, remove it from the heat. Um, then you want to take the egg yolks and uh, pour it in uh, with the uh, cream cheese mixture. Like that. And you want to mix it in. This is a very interesting way to make a cake. Though it's a sponge cake, so uh, yeah, I guess Twinkies hmm. are sponge cakes, so I wonder how those are made. Alright, so you want to get yourself like a little sifter, because we're going to be sifting the stuff in. Uh, the four uh, tablespoons of uh, cornstarch. And then the one fourth cup of flour. Then we want to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then we stir. Alright, next we want to beat the egg whites in so they're nice and frothy. Is that how you pronounce it? Or oh, whatever. So, yeah, just beat them in. Yeah, kind of like if you were making pavlova. I was yesterday. You don't want to overdo it because uh, then uh, it'll just leave the cake all dry and uh, so something like that. And then you want to add in the sugar one third at a time so until it becomes nice and creamy. So that's Alright, next it says we put it into the uh, mixture, and then of course, <laughs> what else are we going to do? We're going to stir it, of course. And what else besides uh, stirring? Alright, next you want to preheat your oven to 250. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird, and of course you want to put it in a greased up the cake pan. Let's dump this in. Yeah, uh, miss. I need to get a spoon to scoop that out. So. Okay, now this is going to be a weird part because you need a large dish and put it, put some warm water in it. Uh, I forgot how, I forgot why it sets. Um, it says to place the cake in a large dish uh, containing warm water to create a double boiler. So now we have to put the entire thing in uh, for 20 minutes. Then uh, we gotta take it out. Uh, I keep forgetting about those pans. Alright, just gonna put this whole thing in there. And then first we're gonna do it for 20 minutes. Okay, so apparently uh, you want to bake at 250 for 20 minutes, then you want to change it to 300 for 20 minutes, 230 for 30 minutes, and then 350 for 5 minutes. Um, it doesn't say uh, take it out of the oven and then put it back in, so uh, I, I assume uh, once the uh, oven goes off I'll just change the, the um, preheat, so yeah. And then we take the cake out of the oven and remove it. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, let's move on to the dinner we're making. So, we're going to be making a special type of soup from one of the most iconic Studio Ghibli films of all time, Princess Mononoke. And what is this type of soup, you may ask? It's actually a soup I never actually heard of before, until I read the book, and it's called Okayu. Or, you know, Okayu, or 
Uh, you can look up the pronunciation on YouTube. I, I did, that's why I had to, so. All right, this one is gonna take as long as the cake. For this, we're going to need four eggs, two teaspoons of cornstarch, one tablespoon of miso, I don't know what that is, so you can substitute that out for soy sauce, um, one third cup of uncooked jasmine rice, one tablespoon of crushed chicken bouillon cubes, one to three sprigs of cilantro chopped up, a pinch of pepper for garnish, and a pinch of crispy fried onions for garnish. So, let's get started. All right, first get yourself a saucepan like this and then boil four cups of water. In the meantime, uh, let's get another pan because, well, I'll just show you. Ah, uh, crap, I just dropped one of the eggs, but that's okay because I got an 18 pack, hasn't been used yet, and uh, I got almost uh, half of these done. So yeah, I got, I'm pretty good on eggs, so let me clean this up before continuing. <laughs> Also, I had the wrong burner off. What is with my mind today? Uh, I'm really hoping this cake turns out okay at least. All right, now you wanna grease yourself a small uh, saucepan. You wanna take one of the eggs and just make it into an omelet. I do not have enough pans, really. Eh, but I don't know, that, that should work. All right, uh, cook it for like two to three minutes. I think it's almost been three minutes, so I don't know. I'm not quite ready to put it over yet, but uh, yeah, I'm just making sure I put it in the center where it'll, uh, it'll uh, cook better, but can I cook it yet? Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a little more time. It's not like we're making an omelet anyway, we already did that. Yeah, that should be good enough. All right, then you wanna beat the three uh, remaining eggs, which I just did. And then of course you wanna cut up the eggs into pieces. Um, the picture actually looks uh, similar to this, so yeah, I did it the right way. All right, uh, now it says we want to make a slurry. Yeah, we do that by combining the cornstarch with an equal amount of corn water. So, uh, cold water, corn water, cold water. All right, so we got the two tablespoons of uh, cornstarch and you wanna add in a cold, uh, some cold water to make a slurry, an equal amount to be exact. All right, now that the water is boiling, we can add in, uh, stuff to it. The crushed bouillon cubes. The beaten eggs, not sure um, how this works, but I guess you just put that in there. And then the miso, or, or the soy sauce, which I substituted that for. Then we uh, put the one third of jasmine rice in uh, another pan and then add some water to it. The book didn't really say how much, it just said added water, but uh, I made rice before. I think I know how this works, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure why you couldn't just, I don't know, put it in the pot there and wow the... Is it supposed to be like that? Is it supposed to be like, uh, well, as well, I know the eggs are, well, yeah, it, it, it should be like that, as far as I know, because it told me to dump the eggs in there. Well, at least I know the eggs are cooked. Yeah, I recommend leaving the, the top on the rice just in case. All right, once your rice is done, we put it in. And apparently we're making this into a porridge. Apparently, okayu is like a, a porridge of some sort. All right, so now we just want to top it off. We top it off with uh, some of the egg strips. No, it already looks like there's some eggs in there. The cilantro, I'm assuming that's enough. Of salt, a pinch of pepper, then finally a pinch of uh, fried onions. It just said a pinch, it didn't really say like a teaspoon, but that doesn't look like enough, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't resemble the picture too well, but it did mention that Okayu can be made in a variant of ways. This is a more lavish version than the simple bowl a forge scene in the film. So, yeah, I, I think it looks okay. Um, the cake is nearly done, so once I take that out, I'll get this a try. 
give it some time to let it cool while I let uh, the cake cool. All right, so the cake is out of the oven. It looks a little bit flatter than I anticipated, but I don't know, it definitely looks like a sponge. And I know the water is boiling. Oh, I have the, I don't really need to boil the cake. Let me actually take that cake out of that pan. It definitely smells very cream cheesy, so it's honestly kind of like a, it's kind of like a cheesecake. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, let's try the porridge, or the okayu, or what, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's give this a taste. It's definitely not very salty. In fact, I don't think I really had porridge like uh, this before, or any type of porridge, or porridge in general. So, yeah, but I don't know. Um, I'm kind of thinking that I didn't really. Uh, do it fully right but it's good to know that at least the eggs will cook in and I'm not just like eating raw eggs so yeah that's good to know but yeah I like this yeah I like this it's not too salty not too uh... yeah that's it just not too salty I expected this to be more like a soup but the fact is it's um... but yeah Okay, it was really good, so I'm gonna wait a little bit before I have the sponge cake, cause, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting dish. I'm pretty sure there are other people that have made it better than me, but, yeah, all I can say is that, you know, this is, this is a pretty good, um, this is a pretty good one. All right, so I'm ready to try the cake. Uh, yeah, it is like super flat. And uh, yeah, if only, I, I did have self-rising flour from like when I made the Shadowland cupcakes. Uh, like I, I was thinking about using that, but I got regular all-purpose flour because, um, because I'm gonna be using that for another recipe I plan to make. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to look a little thicker, so I'm not sure. I'm just hoping it at least tastes good, so. Yeah, let's give this a little taste test and see how I did. And honestly, I could just eat this as a pancake, but I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, I just cut it out and made it look like Pac-Man. Now it looks like he's getting a giant pellet. Yeah, so I'm gonna add like a little dollop of whipped cream because, you know, just to give it a little more style. Yeah, it, it doesn't say to add it, but I feel like, you know, since it's, it looks like uh, something you could add whipped cream to. Uh, so yeah. Oh, and just for the sake of it. Alright. Let us try this spongy cake. Spongy bobby cake. I'm actually a little nervous about this one, but let's give it a taste. Okay, you know what? That's actually not bad. I have a feeling that it's supposed to look a little bit thicker, like it's supposed to rise a little bit more. But as it stands right now, how it tastes, it actually tastes pretty damn good if I do say so myself. So yeah, it's squishy, it's um, feels spongy in my mouth, that uh, might have sounded a little weird, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty pleased with this. It's probably something that I'm not going to make again. I mean, I would make it again, I just, I'll probably need someone's help next time, you know, just in case uh, it's supposed to look better, but all in all, I'm pretty impressed. So yeah, so yeah, Okayu was pretty good, and the sponge cake is pretty good. Oh, oh yeah, and, and the house moving breakfast thing, that, that was really good. Which do I like more? I'm not sure. But I can definitely say that uh, this book right here, which I, uh, I've i been using for this video, yeah, it has some pretty good recipes and I'm holding it upside down. So yeah, I recommend getting this. Uh, the recipes might be unofficial, but hey, heavily inspired by Studio Ghibli. And uh, yeah, if you're a massive Studio Ghibli fan, I recommend uh, picking this one up. I might do more recipes in the future. This time I'll do it from a specific movie and put the title of which recipe I'm making it from the movie, but yeah, but all in all, I'm pretty satisfied. That took so long, 
like way too long. But yeah, I was, I'm, I'm actually happy with this. So yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will have more um, cooking videos out soon. There actually is another one I plan on doing. I'm not sure when, it might be next week, but there's one I have been gathering, gathering the ingredients for, so I might be making it really soon. So yeah, I just, I can't wait for it. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I would give you a hint, but uh, I, I, I don't really want to, <laughs> bring any hints right now. I'm just gonna finish this up and go to bed. But anyways, see you guys later. Word out. I cannot wait to make your type of pie. You know what I'm saying?